In this video, I'm going to show you what's in my opinion, the best vectorizer for AI graphics for POD. And I'll show you how I use it to increase the quality of my graphics and also remove the background afterwards. So the website in question is vectorizer.ai. I've mentioned this before in the past. It used to be free when it was in beta or alpha stage. Unfortunately, now we have to pay for it. But in my opinion, if you vectorize a lot of files, this is definitely worth it because it is far ahead of its competition, whether it is free alternatives that are found or even paid alternatives like Adobe Illustrator has an image trace feature. This vectorizer right here, is way, way better in terms of its result when it comes to colors, when it comes to the curves, the accuracy. This is definitely by far my favorite option. Um, you can also scroll down right here on the homepage and see it in action. You've got an example right here running. This is the raster and this is the vector result on the right hand side. So you can scroll across right here. It was very pixelated before. And then afterwards, it just it looks fantastic. You can even click on some sample images down here at the bottom to test it out. So you click on this dog on the skateboard, for example, and then it will process in the background and turn this raster image into a vector for us to kind of test the tool out before having to subscribe. By the way, if you're still confused whether you should use a vectorizer or an upscaler, I recommend checking out one of my past videos where I gave a lot of key factors or important things to note that helped me decide whether to use an upscaler or a vectorizer because I don't just use one of these exclusively. Sometimes I use an upscaler, sometimes I use a vectorizer. It really depends on a bunch of different factors. So right here, this is processed. Now I can zoom in and once again we can kind of see the before and after by using this circle now they've changed this so we can highlight something in the circle and see the before which is absolutely terrible you can see how many pixels there were how many different colors and if we take this away it's just turned it into a very smooth one color curve looks absolutely fantastic really really good result and wherever you look it's done a great job at turning this into a vector so going back to the homepage right here, the way to vectorize one of your files is to just drag and drop it onto the homepage. As simple as that. Usually it takes about 10 seconds for it to turn it into a vector, depending on how many colors you have, how complex the, the paths are that are being created for the vector. But there we go, that's all done. Now, once again, you can zoom in and compare the before and after. You don't have to do that, but it is an option. We've also got different views that you kind of flick through. So here we've got the side by side, left hand side, the original images, right hand side, the vectorized image. You've got some different like shortcut buttons right here for zooming in and out as well, if you wanted to use those. And then one feature which I've started using more and more recently is the palette up here in the top left corner. And because here you can decide how many colors are going to be included in your final vector graphic. Now in this case, we only have eight by default to start off with, which is already quite low. You can see if I take this down, it's going to take more and more colors away. I think that actually also looks quite good, just the red and the blue and obviously the white for the background. But yeah, I'm probably going to stick to eight, maybe maybe seven colors. But sometimes this has really helped me out when I've got a little bit of a more complex graphic with more colors to it. Sometimes a vectorizer will give me like 30 or 40 colors in the final vector output right here in the palette. And then instead of 30, I'll usually cut it in half. So roughly go down to like 15, 16 colors, for example. And then it usually looks a lot better for the end result. You have to be careful there. because Sometimes if you go down too far, if you take away too many colors, it could lose a lot of its detail, like facial expressions if you've got animals or people in there. So you have to be careful with it. But in many cases, going down on the number of colors has helped me improve the final outcome and also makes it easy to edit the final outcome afterwards if you're using vector editing software. So I'm going to choose seven right here, then hit OK, and it's going to refresh this and process it again to suit seven colors in the palette. And then I'm going to go ahead and click uh, download up here. And the settings that I typically use are stack shapes on top of each other, I believe by default. Actually, let's reset this. Yeah, by default, this is set to place shapes and cut outs in shapes below. So I tend to have an easier time if this option is selected, easier time in Illustrator. Um, and also clip overflow has helped me get better results that are easier to work with in Illustrator and also look better in the end. If you've got any other settings right here that you've changed before, which have given you better results, please leave it in the comments down below because there is like a ton of different options that take a lot of time to test. Right, once that's done, we can scroll down and hit download right here. Now that's going to be saved to a downloads folder and we can already drag the next image into this field right here. And that is kind of a little bit of a downside of this tool. You have to do it one at a time. You can do bulk upscaling, but at the end of the video, I'll show you a quick tip on how to actually use Vectorize AI the same 
tool the same kind of great results, but actually bulk to save a lot of time as well. So I've gone ahead and opened up this vector in Adobe Illustrator to take the final step in this process, which is removing the background. And then this file is going to be print ready. I'm using Adobe Illustrator because I'm most familiar with it. There is definitely other options out there. For example, a free vector editing tool that is probably also able to do this would be Inkscape. But to show you how I typically do this, you can drag this graphic off of the artboard and you can clearly see there's still a background color attached to it. But because it's a vector, we can easily click on this, move it around, we can hit delete and it still looks terrible. <laughs> but these remaining white shapes in between the letters and in between the trees, we can also quickly get rid of those by highlighting the entire design and then go to the path finder window, which if you don't see it, go to window and enable the path finder. And then you want to divide your shapes. And now you can use the direct selection tool to click on one of the white shapes or one of your background color shapes, then go to select same fill color. And now you've got everything selected that's white, you can hit delete. And there we go. Now this has been cleaned up and we can drag it back on the artboard. And let me also quickly show you what this would look like if we had some different shirt colors that this graphic is on. So if it was light gray, still looks great. If we had sort of a beigey shirt behind it, beige-ish, yeah, that still looks good. A light blue would also work. So just to quickly show you, this now works really well on light t-shirt designs. Now, another benefit to having this in vector format is now we can easily make edits to this. So whether you want to move an individual shape, you can do that. You can highlight multiple shapes, move them around. You can also change colors individually. Like if you wanted this to be a little bit more pinkish, for example, you can just drag the colors around and you can also highlight everything. And in Adobe Illustrator, you've got this recolor artwork function. So if we click on this, it's going to open up the entire color palette right here. And we can drag these dots around and change the color scheme very, very quickly and effectively. And yeah, that way affect the feel of the graphic quite nicely. So a bunch of options right here. I really like turning my designs into vectors because they kind of, it makes them easier to edit and Adobe Illustrator is a very good tool for that. So there we go. Now this is ready to be used. You might just have to export it at the right dimensions for whichever print size you need because at the moment this artboard is just a default square right here. But there we go. That's it. I hope this process helped you out. If you found any other good vectorizers besides Vectorizer AI, let us know in the comments down below. So one thing that's a little bit annoying is that you cannot use the Vectorizer.ai website to bulk upscale or bulk vectorize your graphics, I should say. I still use it if I just have like one or two images to vectorize and I can do it quickly like that. But if I have like a set of 10, 20, 30 graphics I've generated with AI, I don't usually use this because it is tedious and it takes quite a lot of time. In that case, I would go to my designs, which has vectorizer.ai built in and you can use it in bulk right there, which has saved me countless hours in the past vectorizing my graphics. And if you want to learn how to do that whole bulk vectorizing process with my designs, then check out this tutorial next.